Hi folks, it's Evo here from Thunderbiss Lure Company and welcome to today's episode of Thunderbiss Fishing Tips. I've just hooked into my first pike. He's not very big, but he hit pretty good and if my net man would get here, I'm fishing today with the boatless angler. I've got Antonio with me. There he is there, Antonio. This is oh, just a small pike. Nice. There we go. There's a start to our day. Actually, it's a second start. Antonio caught a real small one about uh, 10 minutes ago. Half the size of this one, actually. Yeah, about <laughs> half the size of this one. And there's a nice pike right there and a good hook set. Just right in the side of the mouth there. That's a decent sized pike. We're going to get him back in. Goodbye, Mr. Pike. We're out here fishing Martindale today. And actually, we only got about an hour. We had ourselves a nice dinner tonight. We said, let's go for a ride to Martindale and see if we can hook into a pike. And bingo, that's our second one of the night. We're running the Python darters today. Uh, I've got a twister, a scented twister tail on the back of that. And uh, I'm running the silver python. Antonio's got a gold one on. I've got the silver because we got some nice sun out here. And I'm also running a wire leader. I like to run a wire leader when I'm fishing for pike. Um, a lot of people like to run uh, a heavy fluorocarbon line to help prevent against cutoffs, but really, those pike will cut, cut that fluorocarbon just like nothing. Steel wire line's the best way to go. And you could, uh, you could buy them already made, but I uh, actually made my own. And if you're interested in making your own, folks, we do have uh, a display, a video on our website on how to tie your own steel wire lines. And all we're doing today we're casting our line out and Antonio and I are just fan casting the area. It's starting right off with right close to the shoreline, letting the line sink a bit and then just with a nice slow steady, steady retrieve, let that python darter do its magic and bring it right in towards the shoreline. In fact, that last one hit very, very close to the shore just as I was uh, almost ready to take my uh, python darter out of the water. But it's a good technique. We're going to fan cast the area. And we're going to continue working down this shoreline. When I cast it out further, I'll let it sink a little bit more before I begin the retrieve. But we'll work this entire shoreline looking for some more fight. The other thing I went and did, folks, because I tied my own steel wire leader, I went and got a black permanent marker, and I just colored my black or my uh, steel wire leader black with that permanent marker. It gives it less of a profile in the water, less visible to the fish, and uh, I think it gives me a bit of an advantage. And you know, I am running the steel wire leader, but honestly with these python darters, you could probably get away with not because they see it's two actions in one lure and they see the trailing bait and they typically hit the trailing bait. Now, I just brought this in. I just want to point out as well, there's some a little bit of weed here, a little bit of debris just on the end of my line. I'm going to take that off because any debris like that, if, if the pike suspects something isn't quite right, they won't hit. So I always try to keep my bait as clean as I possibly can, give me as much opportunity as I can to hook in. Slow retrieve was the key today. The, the pike definitely wanted a slow retrieve because this water is still very, very cold even though it's nice and warm out here. But anyhow folks, we're going to wrap things up. Uh, I think we're going to make a nice little visit to Tim Hortons and get a nice coffee on the way back home. But I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Thunderman's Fishing Tips. And as always, until next time, good luck and good fishing.